the most wicked and narcissistic people are in church. Do you know why they are in church? They are in church because it's not possible for you not to be an evil person, for you to be coming to a place like that. And you're listening to God's word every day. You see what is happening and you're still evil. It means that that person originally a devil became. So church can be a very dangerous place. The singular fact that he goes to church, spirit filled, he speaks in tongue, he's always early, he's this quiet brother that is on fire for Christ, does not mean that his goals, vision, ambition in life aligns with yours. Learn to listen to your spirit man. The fact that she's an usher in church, she's so quiet, so beautiful, oh, so angelic, does not mean that she's your soulmate. Most of the time, the mistake we make is that we tend to look at the physical attributes of people because it's not everybody that goes to church that is actually there for God. Even God himself said it that many are called, but few are chosen. Allow room for your discerning spirit to come alive. Because most times it's there and it's whispering to us, but we tend to like numb it. We don't listen to it because we're so overtaken by the physical attribute that most times it costs us. Especially our African parents, for example. A guy comes along and he wants to marry your daughter. Oh, the first question that comes is, did you go to church? Do you even have a Bible? When was the last time you read the Bible? Are you filled with the Holy Spirit? What denomination do you attend? And he tries to gather himself before he's even able to answer your questions. Oh, he's an unbeliever. You cannot marry this man. He's an unbeliever. And you label him an unbeliever. Another guy comes with a very big Bible. Before you start throwing those questions at him, he's already sharing testimonies of God's goodness upon his life. And you're like, oh, hallelujah, God is good. Then you excitedly give your daughter out in marriage to that man. Ten years down the line, you discover that he is the most wicked, narcissistic, evil personality that you can ever encounter in your entire life. Now, the problem is that we tend to look at the physical attribute, like I said. We don't look at that spirit mind. Even God himself says that when you come to me, you must come to me in spirit and in truth. And we look at all these, and all these church activities. Listen, I don't have any problem about church. I go to church every week. In fact, any week when I don't go to church, it's maybe something is really wrong. The fact that I practically grew up in church is not the reason why I go to church. I go to church for two reasons. Number one, the Bible says that we should not forsake the assembly of brethren together. There is a covering on you when you associate with the brethren of God. There is this grace that abounds. Number two, I go to church because realistically speaking, let's just be honest. Sometimes we are caught up in the hustle and bustle of this life that in fact, eh, you can't even really make room to read the Bible. You can't really, really make room to commune. And honestly, that two hours or three hours that I'm in church, I just dedicate it to communing with God, to service with God and to like, you know, feed from his table. The point I'm trying to make in this video is that we need to connect to our spirit man because it's very key. It's going to help you. It's going to save your life. Recently, I stumbled on a Nigerian movie, which has been out for like two years. I didn't even know. So I was watching this movie. I kind of find it interesting. By the way, if you want to check it out, the movie is Afame Funa, the Uma Boy story, right? I just find the storyline very interesting. So I stayed put and I was watching. So there's this business mogul in that movie that a proposition was brought to him, a very juicy one at that. In fact, even all his bigger boys were already jubilating that men were about to take this whole thing to another new level. And this business mogul just looked at the gentleman in front of him and is like, no, there is something in my mind there. Mm, something in my mind does not accept this. The, this. the proposal is okay, it's good and everything, but I don't feel right. It doesn't feel right to me. So please, he just declined. And his boys were so angry and they were like, why would you decline an offer like this? He actually dodged the bullet by declining that offer. He was so designing that he could actually differentiate fake from real. Even me, I was surprised because I never knew that that company was looking for another business they could like tag along in order to use them as money launderers. So at the end of the day, he dodged bullets by being so discerning, by listening to his spirit man, by allowing his designing spirit to be alive. That is the point. Nobody says you should not get a good brother in church and, you know, date, marry and all of that. But do not overlook all of the red flags you're seeing just because he speaks in tongue. He is this, he's fervent. All of that is good. But last, last, now only God, now I know what be real and what be fake. The only way you can differentiate these things is when you sit still within yourself, listen to your spirit man and ask God to speak to you. Open your ears. And listen, don't allow all these things that are shining all over the place to blind your eyes and make you not see correctly. Because, my dear, this marriage matter is long. 
You get no be everything with the glitter and I be gold. No be every brother, 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 and I they really, really do things with God. You don't know what he really is behind closed doors. So listening to your mind, allowing your designing spirit to be your life, commune with yourself, you will be able to distinguish between fake and real. So please do not numb your spirit, man. Listen to yourself. See, a church matter is deep. Not be everybody where you see for church, nine before God. In fact, the most wicked and narcissistic people are in church. Do you know why they are in church? They are in church because it's not possible for you not to be an evil person, for you to be coming to a place like that. And you're listening to God's word every day. You see what is happening and you're still evil. It means that that person originally, almost a devil became. So church can be a very dangerous place. And as much as it's a good place where, you know, we go to seek the presence of God, we receive healing, we receive grace, we receive mercy. It can also be a dangerous place because, man, some people are just wolves in sheep clothing. So we have to be very careful. And how can you do that? Look inward. Listen to your spirit, man. Don't fail to listen to your instinct. Let your designing spirit be your life. It's going to be a guard over your life. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. Don't forget to click the like button. Subscribe if you have not done so yet and join the family. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.